Ladies and gentlemen, Jessa Tracker here. Welcome to what will be the long awaited class overview of the uh, Better Everything campaign. One of my favorite things about doing an XCOM 2 campaign is just blabbling my heart out about all the different classes, and I especially have a ton of things to say about the. Uh, of the uh, better uh, barracks classes and the wibbles and all that stuff today. And I think I'm going to do everything. Alright, even the hero classes that I've already done before. Now you may be wondering why the fuck I'm standing here with a empty lineup. Well, normally at the start of a class overview video, I normally have the four soldiers that we start with here to kind of show off to kind of show off, right? You know, like, we made it to the end of the campaign. However, nobody fucking lived. <laughs> Out of the original four, it was Kingpin, Neem, Kickass, and Krista, who all started this campaign off oh so long ago. None of them survived. This has been my fucking biggest fucking, like, mortality rate of any campaign. Hey, let's take a look at the fallen soldiers here. Uh, memorial. Fallen soldiers. You know, I've spent a lot of time thinking about these gene therapy clinics lately. It's tempting, right? Yeah. You treat your body like garbage and stop in for a quick tune up. Let's try to count them, to shall you. we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. The aliens. Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three. Thirty-three. The advent forces they tried to. XCOM soldiers got fucking clapped. This now campaign. This has been my highest mortality rate of any campaign so far that I've ever recorded. Alright? And, uh... We're not actually going to the Chosen Stronghold mission. I'm just using this mission as a uh, template to uh, set up the class overview with. So don't worry about that. But, uh... So, at the end of the campaign last night, it said... 100 soldiers killed. So only... So only, uh... 33 of them were actual XCOM soldiers. And the rest are like double agents, mind-controlled units... Er... I don't know if resistance personnel count. On like Haven missions and from the Fireborns mission pack. I don't know if they count for losses too, but if they do, then that probably counts for a lot of it as well. So it's not all my fault, okay? <laughs> oh. oh man. But uh, yeah, before we get into the class overview, I want to say a couple things about a better end. A better everything has been one of the most challenging campaigns so far. And uh, that's a blessing and a curse, right? I finally found something that really, you know, puts the hammer down on me, right? I finally found something that tr is truly uh, challenging to me. Because previous campaigns, yeah, sure, I would lose some soldiers and I would have some failed missions, not to the extent of this during streaming A Better Everything. I have... it was... And a good part of that probably comes from a better everything and those nasty prime enemies. And I want to touch up on the prime enemies a little bit, because throughout the campaign a lot of people have been saying that prime enemies are kind of annoying and stupid. Well, I can see how that happens, how why you say that, but to be honest... They present a new kind of balanced challenge, right? And I like to call them mini, mini alien rulers, you know, like pocket alien rulers. Uh, they remind us of alien rulers because they get a reaction every time they get hit, but that's just the thing, it's only when they get hit. 
you don't move two tiles to the left and they get to shoot you, right? So that's why I say it's a mini, probably more balanced version of the Alien Rulers. Because let's be honest, the Alien Rulers uh, ruler reaction is really a little over the top, considering it's a turn-based strategy game. Like, come on. Kind of breaks the whole meaning of turn-based. But at the same time, Prime Enemies kind of puts it into balance, you know. Provides a challenge to make you step out of your comfort zone a little bit. And, uh, it makes you kind of rethink the battlefield. Like, okay, we have this big scary prime enemy, but in order to kill him, we have to hit him. But every time we hit him, we fucking he gets a reaction. Now, that doesn't mean he's always going to shoot at us, though. Right, they could reposition, they could overwatch, they could do an ability, they could pop a personal shield, they could do, you know, they could pop a buff, something like that. So at the same time, it's like maybe we can sneak in a couple of shots, but if it's something like an Andromedon Prime or a Sectopod Prime, we don't want them taking reactions, right? Because Andromedon Prime can acid blob us, Sectopod Prime just rips us the fucking threads. It happened a lot during my testing, because before I officially start a campaign, I always recreate the mod list and do testing prior to starting the campaign to make sure all the mods speak to each other nice and nothing, you know, nothing breaks. So, uh... And during my testing, I got fucked by the primes a lot. Which, I guess, is cheating, technically. Because going into the actual campaign, I fought the Primes, and I kind of, you know, have an idea of what to expect. It still didn't prepare me for the shit that happened during this campaign, though. And, uh, let me tell you, when that, when the Chosen Hunter attacked us the first time, because he attacked us twice, one in, like, the mid-game, one towards the late game, like, right before I was going to finish the campaign, but the first time he did that... And our first encounter with the Exalted Custodians really fucking set us back and put a nail in our ever so tight coffin. But it didn't exactly kill us though because we were able to recover slightly, recover enough to get us to powered armor and heavy weapons enough to push through till the end of the campaign. Although, even when we did get to the late game mode, where we should have been alpha striking everything, that wasn't always the case. Because I've had missions where it was really, really, really kind of, you know, sketchy, right? And I'm just lowering the uh, volume in uh, OBS. Apologies about the break in uh, music there. But, uh... Yeah, this campaign definitely proved a bit of an interesting challenge, and don't get me wrong, there were a lot of frustrating moments during the stream. I definitely got a little hot-headed at points, and it got to the point where I would just forget about everything and start dishing out action points. I didn't reload saves too often, except for during the final mission. No, I didn't reload the save. Uh, the avatar got killed, and I was kind of forced to. But uh, I didn't reload too many saves because I have that sort of, you know, humble rule where it's like I only save scum if it's a squad wipe or something like that. I don't remember save scumming a whole lot. But then again, it's been a while, and I've gone through some shit, so I may have forgotten. <laughs> and. Uh, but I did give out action points a lot during this campaign because, you know, if, like, an infantry misses a 95% flank shot on an enemy, it's like, yeah, no, you can do better than that. Try it again. <laughs> and that happened a lot. I'm not exactly proud of that, but at the same time, it really, this campaign really, you know, pushed me and pushed me out of my uh, normal XCOM comfort zone, but I, and like I said, it's a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing that I could, you know, 
find something that challenges me and forces to change my playstyle because I normally just run in, activate everything on the map and try to kill as much as I can or control as much as I can. That doesn't exactly work in, uh, for the river thing because A, primaries and B, modded enemies. A lot of the modded enemies that I have on top of a better everything likes to shoot or do an ability or something instead of scampering. Right? You know, like the Boas, Advent Psy Commandos, and a bunch of other people. If you activate them, they will like, you know, they will tongue pull you, they'll shoot you, they'll smoke rain, and all that stuff. Although overwatching on activation isn't that bad because mechs in vanilla XCOM 2 do that all the time anyway. So it's like, yeah, whatever, you know, it's just what mechs do, right? It's kind of a mech thing, which is, I guess, understandable. But it's like, if you get tongue-pulled by a viper that doesn't, like, go until she gets killed, and especially if it happens on a high, uh, on a high-damaging unit, like a Templar, like in the uh, last uh, mission, the first attempt of at the last mission, then that gets kind of annoying. Or it's like an enemy just stands out in the open to pop a shield, like the Psy Commandos, or shoot me like the Psy Commandos, and they actually fucking hit and get a crit? <laughs> And then that's really frustrating. And other than that, you know, this was a nice campaign. This was a fun campaign. Regardless of all the uh, frustrating, ragey moments, salty moments that I had. I didn't rage too much, necessarily. I just got really fucking salty at points. And gave out action points because of it. But uh, the next campaign idea probably isn't going to be this tough, depending on what happens. But uh, other than that, we can finally get in to the actual class overview. Just wanted to say a couple things about a better everything. The Burke is an awesome modder. I believe he's taking a break from XCOM 2 modding after uh, finishing the a better everything stuff. And he has been on a break, I think, since he finished the better everything collection, which is fine, but that doesn't mean his mods don't work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's an awesome modder, awesome mods, but alas, let's get on with the class overview. I'll be going from alphabetical order, and uh, you'll see a lot of cuts and all that stuff. It'll just be me setting everything up, and I just cut out those parts in post, and yeah. Sit back, relax, grab some popcorn, and listen to me babble on for like half an hour, 20 minutes, ever take. <laughs> Alrighty, so the first class on our list are the agents. Now, agents. I can't see I use the whole lot, considering that we only have one max drink and then one squatty. But then again, I could have used them a hell of a lot beforehand, but then they all started dying off during the purge. And it's in a... Training up low-ranking soldiers, especially in, like, you know, the late game and stuff is... Or the mid to late game is really fucking challenging, you know? Especially with all the scary modded enemies, but uh, agents! Shotgun, sniper rifle, viral blade combo. Like I said, I can't say I really used a lot. Agents a whole lot. Let me just open up a skill tree, but uh... Definitely a very big running gun kind of style class here, right? You can use a shotgun. To, uh, you know, it's like stealthy sniper special assassinating enemies at close range. It literally explains what it is, right? And they rely a lot on their uh, viral blade attacks, regardless of them not doing a hell of a lot of damage. Doesn't help that I didn't get the viral blade until closer to ending the campaign. I never really got to use these, uh,. Abilities a lot like lacerate, disarming strike, hamstring, right? They look like they could be great utility abilities. Then again, with the current setup that I got, we're running into the last enemy of a pod to knife him. 
that won't even kill him runs a big risk of activating another pod that may or may not be a fucking nasty pod and I didn't really use that a whole lot unless it was like a re, re ranger mixtape ranger or a templar because they have a better chance of killing and templars more specifically can parry and do all sorts of crazy stuff right I wish like combatives is a very powerful weapon though weapon ability though you know based off of past playthroughs of other youtubers maybe Dereva uh, shows that combatives is a very powerful very cheesy ability because you could pretty much tank mutons stun lancers race commandos freaking anything that runs up and punches you can tank it all with combatives. Right, because you know you parry all me you parry melee attacks and counter with your melee weapon if equipped. Alright, too bad I couldn't get a lot of use out of combatives. I definitely could have used combatives a lot in the late game. But uh in terms of shooting, uh I probably would have used the shotgun a lot more and things like rapid fire and I guess cereal with a shotgun? I guess I guess that could work, but the way a better barracks handle shotguns, you have to reload one shell at a time unless you have an auto loader. And that really dampens shotguns tactical effectiveness because especially if you give them like an expended magazine or something, then you shoot all your shots. And then you have to spend like the next five turns reloading. Which is really why I don't use them a lot, unless of course I have an auto loader on them. Then it's a lot easier to manage, but without an auto loader, they're kind of more of a nuisance than a assistance, right? Which is why I probably didn't use a lot of agents a lot, because I mean, we have other classes dedicated into sniping that are, that are a lot better at sniping, so I never really took an agent with a sniper on it unless it was, you know, a last ditch effort to get a fucking soldier in the squad. And it's the only upgraded weapon we have. Alright, so agents, I can't say a lot about them. They do have potential, and I wish I had more opportunities to use them, but it's just how the cookie crumbled this campaign. And yeah, moving on. All right, next we have our Grenadiers, or Grenadier. During the early stages of this campaign, I relied on Grenadiers a lot, but towards the late game, all of my good Grenadiers got killed. And during the purge moments, that's kind of like the moments leading up to the uh, first Chosen Avenger Assault, plus a couple of missions after, before we started rebuilding. And uh, I just lost a lot of my Grenadiers' uses. Now, Grenadiers can use rifles or cannons. Normally, I just have them with rifles because they're a lot more reliable to use after they use up all their grenades they can still move and shoot relatively easily because the way cannons work in a better barracks is that cannons take two full turns to reload and if you try to move and shoot you have like a negative 20 aim penalty so yeah it makes sense because it's a big heavy fucking cannon and it's not as annoying as the shotgun because the shotgun really, really, really dampers on the fast-paced combat that is normally XCOM 2. And having your frontline soldier in the back reloading single shells into the shotgun at a time really, really, really dampens your alpha strike and killing potential. With cannons, it's not that bad because cannons also have like 12 shots in a fucking magazine. So you don't have to worry about reloading too much. But uh, Grenadiers definitely are very, very, very useful. You know, cover destruction, explosives, slap on a war suit, get a shred storm cannon. Although I didn't use special armors a whole lot this campaign. Which, uh, as Ethan, uh, as Ethan said before, it's like 
It makes the game more challenging, but it doesn't make the like 10 times harder, like you said. Like, yeah, sure, having Shredstorm Cannons and all that stuff would be nice, but it's not necessarily necessary because we have a bunch of OP abilities in the late game on the soldiers that actually fucking survived. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I mean, Grenadiers, what can I say? Explosive ordnance, whenever, wherever, and whenever we need it. it uh, Grenadiers are probably one of the classes least affected by a better barracks. Except for, you know, the mixed skill trees per time. Like, why the fuck would I take Field Medic on a Grenadier unless I was that desperate? <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'd like the agents, I wish I had more time to use them, but at the same time, it's not that bad. Because Grenadiers is like one of the least affected classes, except for the fact that they can equip assault rifles now. So, I mean, Grenadiers, all around reliable class. They're, it's in vanilla, so of course we're going to be seeing them again a lot in the future. But uh, yeah, not much to say here. Moving on. All right, next up is our infantry class. Probably the highest damage dealing non-hero class we have to our disposal. Infantries are just the guys who shoot and kill everything. All right, two infantries lived up to Cornel rank, although I think Trigara was uh, Recruited as Cornel, or at least like maybe a couple levels off. I keep on saying that wrong. Cornel, Colonel, Cornel, whatever. And, uh, you know, let's just open up a skill tree here. It's kind of funny though. I took a lot of suppression and Overwatch abilities on, uh, on my inventories. But at the same, but at the same time, I don't use suppression and Overwatch a lot. When I have, when I bring in infantry, they are normally shooting. Very rarely do they kill zone, or do they suppress, or do they Overwatch. It's all about shooting with these guys. But uh, yeah, and you know their uh, double barrel shotgun makes them just like the Rangers in Long War Two, just with a different set of skills. And, uh, yeah, the infantries are just the killing machines here. Right? If you want something dead, you throw one of these guys on it. Especially combined with, like, a Gatling rifle from the, uh, Armored Vipers mod, plus the Illyrium rounds from the Bio Beasts mod. These guys can do a hell of a lot of damage. I still remember the one time Shigara stunning a, uh, and draw a uh, sectopod prime with Illyrium rounds with a Gatling rifle. And that probably saved us that mission. If it wasn't for if it wasn't for the infantry, if it wasn't for Shigara, who is an infantry, that mission probably would have ended with at least one or two soldiers dead, if not a full squad wipe. Yeah, infantries are definitely a lot of fun. They're really powerful. Uh, forgot I got this on you. But yeah, just having a reliable shooty, killy person is really nice, right? They're just really good. They're really good at shooting things. But uh, like I said, a lot of lockdown mayhem, but I didn't fucking use suppression a lot. In the early game, I used it decently enough. But during the late game, it's like, why suppress when you could just kill them? Because they normally have such good chances to hit in the late game. Because high-ranking soldiers have a lot of aim. So yeah, infantry is really good. Probably one of the best classes in a better barracks. I have to say, definitely fits my playstyle really well. And yeah, moving on.
All right, next up we have our marksmen. Marksmen, like I mentioned during the agents uh, section of this, I said are pretty much just the people who are good at sniping, right? So why would you take an agent with a sniper rifle unless you're really that desperate? Which I think I happened a couple of times at least. But uh, yeah, marksmen are kind of like sharpshooters with, um, I mean, they're pretty much just rebranded sharpshooters from uh, Vanilla XCOM 2. Although they can have uh, shotguns, which is an interesting concept. I normally just take the... I, I don't use snipers a lot in the base game anyway. So they didn't really see a lot of action, mainly for that reason, and yeah, as you can see, because none of them are maxed rank. I did try you with a shotgun for, I think, a couple of missions, and it went okay for the most part. But like I said, shotguns are really dampered by having to reload one shot at a time. So, which is probably why you didn't see a whole lot of actual mission action. You just went on a hell of a lot of covert ops. Meanwhile, these two were our actual sniper rifle marksmen with uh, lances and all that stuff. But even then, they didn't really see a hell of a lot of action because sharpshooters and me just never really clicked. Obviously, they can be really powerful and they do have their moments, but at the same time, it's just how I play, right? It's nothing about their bad or anything. It's just, I don't prefer them, you know? Previous campaigns, they fucking shined. Like, I believe in my original bitter advent for x for vanilla xcon 2 my character was a sharpshooter and i was a fucking badass sharpshooter at that point but that was really the only campaign i really let sharpshooters shine so yeah i mean they're good but only if you're willing to use them, which is, I guess, my hindering there. You know, I wish we could have gotten something like uh, Serial or Death Room Above. If we would have gotten Death Room Above, I probably would have been more inclined to kill the Hunter and take his gun. Take the uh, Dark Lance, so we can just infinitely murder people like a poor man Serial. And uh, without cereal and without either cereal or a bunch of really good pistol abilities, I don't really use snipers all too much. Sorry about you, fam, but uh, there are classes that I actually use to do next. I almost launched the mission. That would be bad. Ah, oh, gee, would you look at that? A fuck ton of psyops. Yeah, I mean, this happens in every campaign, though. I go really crazy in the Psy Lab and just recruit a bunch of people and all sacrifice them to the Psy Labs. Although, with all the wounds and deaths we've been getting this campaign, it's probably paid off in the end, though, because psyops are obviously really powerful, kind of OP. I'm pretty sure a better barracks has its own way of handling psionics, but I don't think I ever got the option to uh, switch to it. It's just vanilla Psy. Throw somebody in the Psy lab for a few months and there you go, you got a fucking OP super soldier. Although, for me it's different. As soon as my psyops get domination, they start seeing action no matter how little of abilities they have. Right, because domination is obviously the ability to have because you can permanently mind control an enemy, which is really good against primes. Because if a mind controlled prime gets hit, they still have the reaction, but it's of course taken out on the enemy and not you, which directs a lot of incoming fire to the enemy. But uh, yeah, psyops are pretty much the bread and butter of any squad. I always like to have at least one psyop in a squad. Just for that free extra soldier through domination. 
and just, you know, guarantee damage through things like Void Rift, Null Lance, Insanity because of Schism, Stasis to handle things like Exalted Custodians, and then, you know, handling other prime enemies that we can't mind control, and yeah, they're just generally very good classes and soldiers. Right, I said it before and I'll say it again, Long War 2 handles PsyOps the best. Because you can still turn them into OP Super Soldiers, but once they get an ability, they have to go out in the field and get actual experience before they can get another ability. So, that, that I think is a fair way of balancing things instead of just leaving them in the side tubes for a couple of months and then having the outcome a fucking Super Soldier. But yeah, they're fun, and they're obviously not my favorite vanilla class. My favorite vanilla class is Ranger, with the sword and the shotgun. Not a lot more two Rangers. But uh, yeah, they're just a good, solid, reliable class that is always there for you. And that's why I like PsyOps. So yeah, I mean, there's not much to say about them. They're not really that changed, so... <laughs> I guess we can move on from this. And now we have the Rangers. Alexa is also a Ranger, but she's wounded right now, so she can't be a part of this right now. But, uh, Rangers... Although I did just say that they're my favorite class in vanilla, this isn't vanilla. Shotguns, I once again, really hindered. So I don't use them mainly for the shotguns, I use them for the sword. And with the, uh, Vorpal Blades that aren't actually here right now because they don't have that mod up anymore. Uh, the Vorpal Braids and the Katana, they are still very useful. I love my Blade Master Rangers. I love running and slicing everything to bits and be good to go there. You know, what else can they carry? They can carry cannons, can't they? Yes, they can, which is weird. I don't know why you take a cannon on a ranger. That's just me. But I mean, get a shotgun with a thing on it and all over it. Use me. Then you're pretty much set to go, and it's like you have a vanilla ranger again. Another really fun class, really like stabbing things with them. Now, I wish we could have gotten. Wait a minute, isn't Alexa max rank? Alexa is max rank. Although I didn't use Reaper a lot. I don't think I used Reaper at all. I probably should have used that more. But, uh... So, uh, yeah, you know... They're Rangers. They're almost completely identical to their vanilla counterparts. Which is my favorite vanilla class. So, yeah! Rangers! Fun! Not much to say about them, though, because they haven't changed much, so moving on. Alright, we have our first hero class here. We have the Reapers. Now, I haven't used a lot of hero classes in this campaign, mainly for the fact that because they keep getting killed. Like... All of my character pool hero classes got killed. Jessica, Eva, Kingpin, Dust Rider. No, I think Dust Rider's still alive. Uh, Helena and Oliver all got killed. I said Dust Rider. I think he's still alive. I'm pretty sure he is. So that's a bold faced lie. But um, Reapers, obviously, I mainly use Reapers for scouting and banishing in Claymores. That's really the only thing I use the brand silent killer the thing is for me rapers only really become super useful once they get silent killer if, until they get silent killer they're glorified scouts in my opinion cuz uh, shadow concealment is nice 
And, you know, you can maybe get away with shooting at an enemy without getting revealed, but unless you have Silent Killer, even if you kill the enemy, there's still a chance that you can be revealed. And mainly because Reapers are so far up into the front line, they normally have eyes on one or two other pods. So if I have them shoot at that enemy without Silent Killer, they still get the kill, but they still get revealed. We're still in a big fucking problem. Right? But once they get Silent Killer, I can pick off an enemy that uh, has low health so I don't have to waste, I don't know, like an infantry shot. That would just be an overkill and waste of damage to attack something else or set up an ambush for the next squad before it comes in and we can overwatch ambush it. Now that's pretty much what Reapers are to me. I know people are absolutely like religious about Reapers. But, uh, yeah, Reapers aren't that amazing, in my opinion. They're not my go-to hero class. But, uh, they, they, they're they useful for scouting, right? They're glorified scouts that, in the late game, have some pretty nice abilities. I definitely use Banish a lot in the late game. Banish I relied on a lot to kill Primes, Chosen, or just other enemies that I get an easy flank on that are at full HP. Like if an Advent Shield Bearer is flanked by my Reaper and I have Banish, I'm gonna banish that Shield Bearer because why the fuck not? It's pretty much a guaranteed kill. And they definitely have their uses and they're definitely really nice in the late game, but until they get Silent Killer, they're kind of meh. They're kind of meh. But hey, you know what? They're still fun to use, so, I mean, yeah, moving on. Now we have the Spark. Now, unpopular opinion, I really like using Sparks, you know? Like, yeah, sure, they're like, it's like painting a giant target on your head because you can't take cover. And enemies normally have a better shot at the spark all the time. Ah, excuse me, but... But, uh... I mean, I guess I, I'm either really lucky with sparks, or I've just gotten good with sparks enough to let, have them not get killed all the time, minus the fact that this is like our third Julian Chen. So I guess maybe that's a bold-faced lie. But I like Sparks, even Vanilla Sparks. I know there are mods that make Sparks good and give Sparks separate classes, but at the same time, I just like using Vanilla Sparks. They're a nice concept. They're XCOM mechs, all right? They have heavy weapons. They, it's a free rocket launcher. They don't want to care about cover so they can easily flank enemies without having to worry about being flanked themselves. And surprisingly enough, I use Bulwark and use sparks as high cover a lot more often than I normally do because normally I don't fucking care about bulwark because the last thing you want to do is bunch up your squad. But I did that a lot more often than I normally do, which is surprising. But yeah, I still haven't gotten a spark up to max rank at all yet. I think this is the highest I ever gotten a spark because I remember using Bombard in previous campaigns. Strike is really fun and really meany. Free shredding is always good. Repair actually works out quite well because repair can also be used on the war robots from the uh, Reaper Squad Mate mod. So repair just has that much more use. And Repair can also be used on Wibbles as well, because he's a cybernetic chrysalid soldier, so that is even better. That's another. That's a way to heal Wibbles without Wibbles having to feast on a corpse when there's none available. So Sparks actually have a lot more inflammation as a robotic engineer for other classes and other soldiers. So that's even better. Sustain, I don't know how Sustain works on a robot, but I've never actually gotten a... Uh, well, first of all, the Julian Shen 1.0 and 2.0 never got Sustain. That probably would have saved a couple of your earlier versions there, buddy. 
<laughs> but uh, I never actually Julian Chen 3.0 never actually got damaged enough to trigger sustain. But it's nice to have in a spark. But uh, yeah, you know, you know, I know it's an unpopular opinion. A lot of people don't care about the sparks. They think they're weak, which is understandable. But I've, I've gotten, I, over the past few campaigns, I have learned to implement them a little bit more in my squads, figure out how they work, where their strengths are, and I can make good use out of them. Then they just have to go through three reincarnations. It's like Jesus. <laughs> on the third, on the third time, on the third respawn, he's actually good. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> let's move on. Next up, we have our saboteurs. Saboteurs are actually really, 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 really fucking useful, and I wish I fucking used them more often. Because if they get the right amount of skills, they can have stun. Right? Most importantly, empowered stun, which is guaranteed to stun enemies. And it's like, why the fuck didn't I use this more often? Well, mainly because all of our other uh, after Krista and before uh, Josephina 2.0, all of our other saboteurs didn't get stun. I mean, empowered EM disruptor is nice against sectopod primes and other mechs and other robotic units. But empowered stun is where it's at, because most of the enemies are organic. There's only a very select few number of robotic enemies. And uh, yeah, 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 an empowered stun would have saved Ethan 1.0. But shut up. It's, it's it's partially the game's fault too, because that stupid shield bearer got a lucky crit on Ethan. If it wasn't for the lucky crit, he would still be alive. But probably would have died during the chosen Avenger assault. But anyway, uh, saboteurs. I really like them. I wish we got more saboteurs. I really fucking wish we got more saboteurs to get more empowered stun to allow us to. Because if we had more empowered stun and more saboteurs with that ability, we could have probably saved a lot more soldiers' lives. We wouldn't have lost nearly as many. It's, uh, yeah, other than that, you know, the cannon, the cannon is a lot easier to use than the shotgun, as I said before, and, yeah, it's just, they're, they're really useful crowd control units. I really like them for crowd control. Other than that, there's not really much else to say about them. <laughs> Next we have our scouts. Now scouts didn't really get a lot of use because I wish scouts started with phantom, right? I really do wish scouts started with phantom and said they start with a hollow targeting thing and they can only use well, they can use sniper rifles and assault rifles, but if they started with Phantom, then they w then I would use them so much more often. But because they don't, why use a scout when you can use a Reaper? Right? That's my view on it. And unless they get things like Phantom, Covert, other stealthy abilities, and I see very little point to use them. They're just another soldier with an assault rifle to me. The hollow targeter, targeter, I really neglect, and I don't think it's that much worth it, unless you get a lot of lucky hollow targeting abilities. But even then, I still don't use them a lot. I mean, I have a max rank scout, but I'm pretty sure he was a mission reward at some point, so it's not really that, you know, fancy. But uh, yeah, it's scouts really aren't. 
Scouts is probably the most useless ability to me in a better barracks. I just don't see any point using them when we have Reapers. You know, and I'm sorry about you guys, but no matter how many fancy holo targeting abilities you have, you will still not be as good as a Reaper. What can you do? And now we have our skirmishers. Skirmishers are easily my most favorite hero class ever because they can just stack up ability points. And surprisingly enough, a skirmisher with running gun, I was hesitant to use it, get it at first because I thought it would be a waste of ability points, but a skirmisher with running gun is actually one of the most satisfying and hilarious and entertaining things that I have ever used in XCOM 2 in a long time. All right, that early grappling hook, firing twice in a turn, racking up action points in the mid to late game. They're just so much fun as a... And as a little side note, I said it before and I say it again, I love the concept of Advent Troopers. If I can only fight Advent Troopers, have the aliens get replaced with uh, powerful Advent Troopers, then I would play that all fucking day. I really like the concept of Advent. Fuck the aliens, get them out of here. They did the part in the original invasion. Let Advent shine. So, uh, yeah, you know, skirmishers are just so satisfying and so fun to use. I love them. Except for skirmishers this campaign, they were missing a lot of their shots, especially Whiplash. Missing a lot of their shots, but... I mean, what can you do? Everybody was missing a lot of their shots this campaign. It's not just the skirmishers. I think it's just that this campaign was a little uh, cursed after the fucking... After the uh, Chosen Assault of Doom. But uh, yeah, they are just... Mm, I love them. But uh, other than that, there's not much to say about them. Hero classes weren't changed by a better barracks at all, so it's pretty fine and normal. And yeah, moving on. <sighs> specialists. Specialists, specialists, specialists. If you're not new to the channel, y'all will know that I treat my medical specialists like gods. Medical specialist is the bread and butter of a squad for me. I need a medical specialist in every squad or else I get really, really, really paranoid. But, ah, uh, I only have one max rank specialist and all of my other specialists got clapped. A saga definitely proved her worth this campaign, but it's like, I wish I had more specialists. I went on a big war robot building spree. It's like, let's replace these stupid organics with some machines. You know, like we can kind of mass produce soldiers to an extent. And I was wishing I got more saboteurs and specialists. I got no saboteurs and no specialists out of all of those war robots I built. I built like five to ten of them. Like, come on! Ugh. Yeah, specialist is really the backbone of my squads. I treat my medical specialists like gods. No matter what campaign it is, I need my specialists. They're so fucking good! It's like I almost rely on them a little bit too much. You know, maybe I should, uh convert my play style or at least my mindset to not rely on specialists too much but it's just so hard to the long range healing the hacking restoration revival protocol revival protocol is one of the very few things that you can actually do to revive somebody out of being unconscious and that's really that's probably one of the major reasons why i like them so much the other two reasons being long range healing and long range hacking. But uh, yeah, specialists, I really love them and I wish I got more of them, for, at least for the war robots.
As I said during, I believe it was Galaxy of War, Specialist's Curse. I love them so much so they're destined to die all the time. And here we go with the Templars. The Templars are very, very interesting classes, although they're melee based. So as I said with the agents and the, re and the rangers, we're dashing up into the fog of war to slash the last enemy in a pod just holds too much of a risk for uh, activating other pods. And parry only works once and deflect is not guaranteed to work all the time. Although we did have some funny moments with uh, that brief like I remember during the second chosen assault of Muton Prime kept on shooting at <coughs> Vega here and the Vega kept reflecting the shot back to him. So it was like a back and forth for a few shots until the Muton decided to give up and move. Uh, or I think he missed his shot. I think that's what happened. And so the back and forth stopped. But it was kind of funny. And uh, I remember talking about this during one of the chosen assaults with Nightmare once. And I was thinking that what if Templars could get a long range version of their shard gauntlets called like whip gauntlets. And the idea with that is, uh, and I have this with a modded campaign with a bunch of evil enemies in store. In a vanilla campaign, this would be incredibly overpowered. I was like, you have whip gauntlets so you can whip at an enemy at long range, still gains focus on kills, so you can still use abilities like Void Conduct and Ionic Storm and stuff. You whip at long range, and it only costs one action, so you can whip and move or move and whip or whatever. So it's like a psionic version of the skirmishers, but you do not get momentum, so you cannot whip whip move right that is the no-go whips do not trigger momentum but you can still parry so if you get parry you can whip whip parry you can move whip parry or you can whip parry i guess that could be a thing and uh, it's just a long range version of the Templar, so when you have all of these big, scary, bonded enemies, especially like Exalted Custodians, Normal Custodians, Prime Enemies, things like that, so you're not walking into it, you're not suiciding yourself like a stun lancer into the enemies. Right? And of course, in Vanilla, where there are no Exalted Custodians and Prime Enemies, it would be very, very overpowered. But like I said, this is a modded campaign in mind. So if somebody wants to do that, that'd be pretty nice. But other than that, Templars are really powerful. You know, Void Conduct, Ionic Storm are very fun abilities. Arc Wave can be a little bit annoying because you can destroy friendly objectives with them and damage mind-controlled enemies with them, which is not what I want. And uh, let me talk about Ghost for a little bit. When I first tried Ghost, when I first started playing World of the Chosen, I was incredibly disappointed. When I say, when it says summon a, a friendly ghost thingy, of the exact copy of the Templar, I thought it would be pretty much like having another soldier where they can, if I absolutely have to, it can hack an objective, they can carry a VIP, they can attack more than three times in a mission, they can pick up more focus on the battlefield, they can use all of the abilities that the Templar has, but no, they can't do any of that. And unless you are lucky enough to get Bladestorm, then Ghost is very underwhelming. There's a mod called a better ghost which changes this, but it should have just been how it was in be in the to begin with, without needing mods. But that's just me. So ghost, I don't really waste the AP on ghost anymore. No, use the AP to get other abilities. But uh, other than that, Templars are still really fun. 
Uh, it's just that the fact that all of my hero classes have been dying a lot this campaign. So I don't know really what to say about that. Uh, anyway, moving on. Last on the list is Wibbles. Now, uh, Wibbles is complicated. Wibbles is an AI controlled cybernetic chrysalid soldier that literally has a mind of its own. The only annoying thing is, is that in the mid to late game, Wibbles is really hard to rank up. Right? Because he's not guaranteed to kill all these high, heavy enemies. And he doesn't do a whole lot of damage. He doesn't have a whole lot of health. Although he can tank environmentally focused enemies like Andromedon Primes, uh, Flame Vipers, Bio Troopers, things like that. They can really, uh... He can really tank those enemies because he's immune to all environmental effects and he doesn't trigger overwatch and all that stuff but that's more so just because you have no control over him so you don't want him running into a bunch of overwatches or having running him running through a pool of acid or a poison cloud because you have no control over it and the ai can only do so much I would have used Wibbles a lot more in the mid to late game, except for the fact that during the last couple of streams, Wibbles has been crashing my game. And not so much as an official greetings commander, XCOM 2 has crashed, the game is must close. It's a like XCOM 2 has stopped responding to a quit the desktop. And it's weird, I don't know what the fuck was happening there, but uh... I wish I got Wibbles to max rank. I'd love to see what max rank ability he has. That's the wrong thing. But uh, abilities like he can use Void Rift, Parasite Birth. Those are really cool. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, you know, maybe I'll try Wibbles again in the future. Maybe just a uh, maybe just reinstalling the mod might help for next campaign but i definitely want to try him for next campaign as well as the other mods uh sadly we don't have any shivs to showcase or else i probably would have done them too but having shivs back from any move within is just really nice to have you know it's nice to have shivs i wish they would live longer maybe had a little bit more hp <laughs> Maybe a bit more native defense, something like that. Something to make them more uh, beefy so they wouldn't die in like three hits. But, uh, oh well, you know what? All in all, like I said, a better everything was a fun campaign. And uh, I already know what I'm going to do for the next campaign. So uh, hold your horses on suggestions, although they're always nice to have. But. Uh, yeah, that's gonna call it here. Thank you all for watching. And if you made it this far, good fucking on you. You must really like listening to my voice or something. But uh, yeah, it's always nice to do these pre campaign or not pre campaign setups, but uh, class overviews. You know, get everything that I want to say off my chest all in one go. And yeah, I mean. See you in the next campaign. I'm out.